Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. I'm hoping you guys are all having a fantastic day. So today's upload is going to be a video about a potential for a Thanksgiving, yes, blizzard. So, uh, I could have called this a snowstorm, you know, but uh, with the winds expecting, or that are expected from the storm, um, this could, you know, definitely be, uh, this could definitely have some blizzard warnings with it, so that makes it technically a blizzard, and I just want to get more people's attentions to this, um, that may sound like clickbait, but, like, it's not since this is very powerful and it will just be so impactful, especially when this will be occurring, you know, around the Thanksgiving holiday, and that will just be producing, or, I mean, just seriously loads of trouble for the uh, for the country. So, uh, you know, it may not even affect your location with rain or snow, but it will impact maybe like your flights as all the airports are connected. So, uh, if you like these updates, if you like what I do, please consider subscribing to this channel. Please consider liking this video. It really means a lot to me, and I really love it when you guys support this channel. So, uh, really consider doing that. It means a lot, so thank you for that. We're looking right now at the GFS model. We're looking at the 00, zero or uh, 12Z. Let's start at the 00Z. Zero, zero so right now we're looking at just a bunch of a bunch of low pressures. That one is going on to the north. It's a weak clipper, producing a little bit of light snow and light rain into the northern, extreme northern U.S. While there is a pretty good nor'easter going on, that will actually bring quite a bit of rain and snow to the northeast. Uh, not the coastal areas really that much as the interior parts of the Northeast, Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine really. We are the only going to be the states are going to get really impacted by that. Notice that passes through and we get a, a pretty powerful system, 990, uh, 987. Uh, this one will, would it's kind of like the precursor or the pre-Thanksgiving storm. You could see 12Z Wednesday. We will be focusing, focusing more on uh, the second storm in today's video, but notice that that one passes through. We get a little bit of a ridging, some warm air for the Friday, November 29th. Then we just get another blockbuster. I mean, holy cow, this one, uh, you can see 991983, also very powerful, and 969, according to the GFS, which is basically uh, as strong as, we've, as you're going to see a certain s storm. So that is uh, very interesting to note of. We're, let's look at the MSLP and precip, and just let's take this second storm uh, by its... Uh, by its, uh, let's just take it one by one. So, the first thing, this storm will be falling, obviously, this, uh, this first one, which will be occurring Wednesday and Tuesday. However, notice that there's going to be a pretty powerful low pressure across the west. Uh, this will actually, um, you know, this is where the two storms will kind of collide. There's, I mean, just a whole crap load, a bucket load of precip coming from the south, from the Pacific uh, Ocean, and this thing will have a lot of moisture. I mean, you can see it's basically nothing blocking it, no big pattern no big no big dropping we're gonna notice that the cold air is plentiful right here so that can you know the gif is a little bit aggressive with these snow rates and snowfall transition but you could see some pretty heavy snow possibly across new mexico and texas we're occurring with this uh storm and this would be around the thursday to no november 28th so we're literally right on thanksgiving uh possibly some blizzard conditions with this uh not out of the question where i mean seriously this will not really do much once it moves out into the country but it does leave a lot of, uh, of snow for Kansas, Oklahoma, Panhandle of Texas, and just Western Texas. However, a lot of this moisture um, stays behind and kind of gets sucked into this beast, which is we're bringing record cold to the uh, California, and it's bringing very heavy snow. There's already winter storm warnings being issued. I mean, it just really strengthens once it gets out into the plains. And look at that. We're right there. Uh, sorry about the clock. It's going off yet again. Uh, I always seem to record the videos when it's that, you know, a, a hour transition from either 2 to 3, 3 to 4, 1 or 2. I mean, you know, it's, it's kind of obscure, but apologize. Uh, notice how uh, we get, uh, we're basically a 992 low level uh, pressure. That is 991 right now, 991 again. Uh, it doesn't have to be insanely powerful to produce lots of uh, snow, especially when it has this much moisture. This system will be just an absolute behemoth in terms of the s moisture and the snow amounts. Look, so it moves into the South Dakota, Nebraska area. And it kind of sits there for a while, bringing very heavy snow up, up all the way up to North Dakota, Minnesota, Wisconsin. And doesn't really move to the north, kind of just, you know, it, it initially does something like this. So it goes right here and takes a path like this. And then just kind of meanders and doesn't really do much uh, at a very slow pace, which allows the snowfall amounts to be pretty significant. Notice that if we go through the 138 hour, 
It moves a little bit, and then a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. It weakens as it does so, and it almost disappears and forms a secondary low in the frontal area of the system. And uh, you can see that it restrengthens a little bit across upper Michigan and some snow wrap around around uh, Monday, late Sunday into the Illinois, Wisconsin area. However, I mean, seriously, this thing will bring a lot of cold air after this. You can see possibly uh, some very, very chilly air coming in after that. And then just overall a more active pattern yet again, followed by a little bit more of clippers and potentially another big storm brewing in the in the in the southwest. So we'll have to see. But um, with this big storm, I mean we're we're gonna be in one uh, one heck of a ride. Seriously, this storm is gonna be big, and you can see North Dakota, South Dakota just absolutely getting a frenzy of snow out of this. Let's look at the total snowfall accumulations. Now again, I'll show you this, but this will be from the two systems combined. The first one that passes through this Tuesday and Wednesday. So this is from the two systems, and notice that 9, 10, uh, 11 inches up to a foot, pretty widespread, uh, and you can see uh, some amounts way higher, up to 30 inches. The GFS is a, s a smaller amount of snow. The European has a little bit larger. Uh, notice very heavy snow across the west, the mountains, the Sierra Nevada getting a, a doozy of snow. I mean, 30, 40 inches, not out of the question, if not more in some of those locations. Again, the storm will just have moisture from the Pacific, moisture from the Southern Pacific, and possibly working with moisture from the Gulf of Mexico. So this thing will basically take, uh, uh, basically take use of all the potential moisture it has, and will just take advantage of that, and really put it to good use, if you, I mean, if you will. Uh, it's going to dump a lot of snow. Notice that GFS does put out quite a bit of snow across the panhandle of Texas and Oklahoma, where this would be very, very impactful. So we have to keep that uh, watching as that would be happening around the Thanksgiving time, for, <coughs> time frame. Or so uh, that that's, uh, you know, definitely something to watch for. Let's look at the European model and take it one by one. So again, the European shows that nor'easter moving off to the northeast right now in the next uh, 24 hours. This is now uh, <clears throat> Maine and Vermont, New Hampshire seeing that snow. And again, we have that little low pressure to the north and that is into northern United St <coughs> States. And that really doesn't do much. However, as we look, uh, again, that's that first little system that moves through, shouldn't call it little, <coughs> will be pretty strong and powerful. Then we really start seeing that second system develop. <clears throat> and notice, it does not have that heavy snow across Texas and the panhandle of Texas and western Texas and New Mexico. It does not have that at all. And I think that's actually pretty plausible as it doesn't look as if the cold air will be uh, really plentiful as what the GFS is showing. GFS has sometimes these weird, you know, I guess forecasting glitches that it does. But seriously, we're, uh, in all odds, uh, or in all, uh, you know, Overall, it, it really doesn't look as if it will be too much of a threat for that area, but it's kind of a weird discrepancy as the European basically shows one inch maybe for those locations, while the GFS shows a widespread six inch plus event, maxing out around 12 feet in 12 feet in some locations. Sorry about my voice cracking. I'm, I have a sore little throat today. Uh, I guess. I don't know. I don't even feel it really, but... Uh, so I apologize about that, but notice uh, mountainous northwest still getting a heavy snow. This system almost has like a, just again, a huge load of moisture. Already some light snow to moderate snow breaking across North Dakota and Minnesota and South Dakota. So that really brings in, uh, you know, the snowfall amounts already uh, starting to accumulate right there. We get a little bit of ice and rain across those locations and get quite a bit of rain to the south. And this storm again kind of breaks apart almost. And uh, these two images aren't available, but then notice it still moves off to the northeast with some vigor. And that would be pretty impactful. So, you know, that, that's pretty good. Um, but if we look at uh, the snowfall accumulations with the, what the European model is showing, let's look at the total snowfall accumulations. Snowfall. And let's check this out. Notice this is just the 10 to 1 ratio, which it may be a little bit higher with this. So notice still a widespread 15, 17, 20, a little bit higher than the GFS. They're showing a widespread foot, foot and a half event, while the GFS is showing a widespread 6 to 12 inches. So there is a little bit of discrepancy between those two. Um, but uh, overall, very similar layout. If you look at the, you know, you know, at the northern U.S., just Nebraska, South Dakota, North Dakota, Minnesota, northern Michigan, northern uh, Wisconsin, uh, UP of Michigan, probably seeing the most. 
So, uh, generally a good uh, agreement on a track, again, not as much, basically nothing for Texas, showing absolutely not a single inch for those locations where the GFS was showing almost a foot, so that is uh, very interesting to note of. Uh, I, I, again, I'm taking with the European more right now, but we'll just have to wait and see what the GFS does. We'll notice that <clears throat> if we look at the Kuchero snowfall amounts that are way higher, the Kuchero usually shows a little bit higher than what we'd like to see. Uh, you can see, I mean, they're showing a widespread 20 to 30 inch event with the Kuchero, which should be, you know, the proper snowfall amounts, like the ones with the proper temperature profile, uh, kind of calculated into the equation. Again, I don't know if it'll be cold enough. If the cold air is, uh, you know, cold enough, I... I don't think that it's going to be cold enough to produce widespread 20 to 30 inch amounts of snow. However, uh, again, the Kuchera sometimes has a better handle on certain things than, uh, than like the other models uh, or certain things, just the snowfall uh, sometimes. But like last time's event, remember they're showing like 7 to 8 inches across northern Illinois and southern Wisconsin. It was 6 to 7 across Wisconsin, but northern Illinois uh, saw less. And I don't know if that's just an issue of, you know, the storm track. Um, or was it an issue of the actual Kuchera, but I, I, I like the Kuchera, however, not in all cases, as you can see, it just, it just blows up many things, kind of overhyped some, you can see, although, I, it shows 94 inches right there across the Sierra Nevada, which I think is actually a possibility and isn't, you know, most, most likely gonna happen, actually, you know, there's few locations could see up to 100 inches, I think. Uh, this storm again has just ridiculous amounts of potential. So yeah, that's basically it guys. Um, thank you so much for watching. Uh, consider liking this video, consider subscribing to this channel, and I'll catch you all guys in the next episode. See ya, bye.